Hello and welcome to the latest video in the Ardu Pilot or Ardu Plane Matic F405 AR wing build. This time it's all about setting up what I call shake to wake. I think lots of people do. It's where you can set the auto launch function so with the wing you can kind of just give it a quick jerk like that. It'll start the motor, you can throw it into the air and it will kind of do the rest of the bits and pieces itself. Now this isn't documented very well in the Ardu Plane wiki. Uh, there is settings in here for how you do auto takeoff with bungee launches and hand launchings and things like that. Uh, now doing this kind of shake to wake thing is a little bit dangerous because of course the prop is going to be running while it's in your hand and a lot of the stuff in the Ardu Plane setup is about making sure that the prop doesn't start until it's well away from you. So use this with caution. Now I was really struggling with this because all the settings for the kind of shake to wake isn't in the Ardu Plane setup guide. Um, I had a bit of help from Ben at 3DXR. Uh, you can check out all the stuff that 3DXR does by checking out my Big Boys Toys playlist. But Ben is an Ardu pilot expert. Uh, he also resells Pixhawk and things like that. He's got a big shop at 3DXR. And I go up there once every two or three months and just have a good look at all the new cool stuff he's got in. But I took a couple of the wings, including this one, and he went through and figured out what was wrong because he has used the shake to wake system on some of his UAVs too. So let me hand over to Ben. He can go through the process. There's only a handful of settings that you need to go into. If you go into the full parameter list and search for TKOFF underscore, then all of the settings are in there. The ones that you're really interested in are the minimum acceleration, uh, the throttle maximum, the delay, the minimum speed, and the slew, which is how quickly it spins up. But I'm not going to go too much in detail into that. Let me hand over to Ben to go through the settings in Mission Planner. Then at the end, I'll go through the process to actually arm it at the field. Okay, so we have a little mini wing here. Um, and let's have a look at the settings for uh, automatic takeoff. So what we're trying to achieve here is um, when we're in auto mode, we're going to be able to shake it to start the motors, throw the plane, and it's going to take off to the set altitude and then either continue on its mission or circle waiting for the user to take over. So let's, let's get connected to the drone here. Com3, we're directly connected with USB, so 115200 on the board rate. And here we go. So Lee was saying he had some problems where he couldn't get this feature to work. So we'll have a look at it and adjust some parameters and get this uh, auto takeoff working. Okay, so I can see we're connected to the drone. We're getting response. We already have a 3D fix, that's good. Readings coming in. Yep. Yeah. All seems to be connected. It's on the map, it's on a correct location here. So I like to go into the uh, full parameters list. And we're looking for parameters to do with uh, takeoff. So in the search box, on the right hand side, I'm just going to type T K O for takeoff, and you will start to see parameters related to takeoff. So, what I'm interested in is a minimum acceleration. Now, I've already connected to this drone and see and found what the issue was. This acceleration was previously set to 15 meters a second a second. I've gone and changed this down to five which is, that's how much it's, you've got to shake it. This is the acceleration it's looking for in order to start the motor. So we've reduced this now to five, and that is when it's in auto mode with a mission on the autopilot, which has the takeoff command first, that's the acceleration it's going to look for to start the motor. There's another parameter here, um, takeoff throttle max. Now, in this case, uh, Lee said it's a 95%, so that's the maximum demanded for all during takeoff. By default, this would be zero, and it would use your standard throttle max parameter, which is 100. This is a handy additional setting if you, for example, only wanted to use 100% throttle on takeoff, and then wanted the highest throttle in normal flight to be, say, 60 or 70%, or if you knew you needed to reduce the amount of throttle on takeoff. There's a delay here in tenth of a second, so there's a tiny delay from the shake to starting the motors. There is some other parameters for different types of launch. So for example, if you used a bungee, 
you might have a minimum speed um, that you wish to initiate the motor start. There's also a slew rate here. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll change the flu, slew rate for the, the time um, the engine sort of spools up to that 95% throttle. So let's have a little look here. If we set this to 20, it's telling me it would take um, 5 seconds. So that would be 20% a second. Let's put this on to 25. So that means it's going to take, after we've shook it, it'll essentially take 4 seconds to get up to full throttle. This gives you a little bit of time to sort of compose yourself before the um, full throttle is engaged. So let's write those parameters. And there we go. It's all been saved. So the next thing we need to have in order to use this feature is a mission written to the drone, uh, to the plane, that has the takeoff command. So I'm just going to zoom into our location. I'm going to right click and select takeoff. It asks me for a takeoff altitude. So this is the, the height at which it considers takeoff to be complete. So this is quite a small plane here. So let's just set this to 30 meters. And the pitch will leave it a default of 15. So what a 30 meters mean is when we throw it, the plane will start moving forward. The pitch will be about 15 degrees. And when it hits the altitude of 30 meters, it considers takeoff complete and it will go to the next either waypoint. At the moment, we don't have any more waypoints in our list, so it would just go to an RTL, so it would circle above the home point, which is where it was armed. Or we could click around the map and add different waypoints. So let's just remove those now. So since we have one command of takeoff, let's write waypoints. Um, let's write our waypoints. And it's always good to check that that has actually been written to the drone. So if I was to clear this mission, nothing down below, and then click read waypoints, that will read back what's on the plane. We always get this prompt here, reset the home coordinates. That's just going to update the home position to where the plane is now. And there we go. So let's have a look. Our home has appeared on top of the plane. And we have this one command of takeoff. So this would be ready to test our automatic takeoff and starting in the motors. So let's have a look at that in action. So now we've got everything set up on the model, then we are ready to actually do the auto launching at the field. Now there's a specific set of things that you need to do in order for this to work. Most of them are exactly what you do with a standard Ardu plane initialization at the field, but there's some extra things too. So first thing of course is to power on as normal and check for the correct movement of the controls uh, on the model in manual mode using the high five method. So just do that. I'd always recommend doing that before a flight anyway to make sure that nothing has accidentally gone wrong. Uh, don't forget as well is when you power up the model, always keep it nice and still until you get the initialization tones uh, that just have to give it that first three or four seconds for the accelerometer to calibrate. If you don't, then it probably won't fly very well. Next, once that's done, uh, then we know it's all happy in manual mode, then put it into something like fly-by-wire A mode and rock the model side to side, front to back, make sure that the corrective action for those controls are all in the right direction. They should be moving to counteract the uncommanded movement. Once that's okay, just wait until you have a 3D lock from your GPS. Now you're gonna see that in the on-screen display or your ground station, or if you're using something like Yapu telemetry, it will let you know that the GPS home location has been stored. Now we're almost ready to fly, and all that stuff is exactly what you do before any typical flight. So what we're gonna do is arm the model and confirm that you can spin the motor. So just give the throttle a very quick blip, make sure the motor spins, and then you are ready to go. Now we're gonna pop it into auto mode, and you know it's in auto mode, because on a wing you will see the elevons raise very slightly, and it's ready to go. Be super careful at this point, because we've set the um, acceleration very low to five, then any good movement is going to start the motor. So only do this once you're in position in the field and you're ready to chuck it. 
Next thing then is to shake the model. It'll spin up because we've set the slew rate to about 25. You've got three or four seconds before the motor's at full speed and then give it a good strong throw in the direction that you want it to climb and it will then climb away at the 15 degrees that we set within Mission Planner. Once it reaches the altitude, if you haven't taken it out of auto and gone into fly-by-way array or manual and started to fly around, it will initiate then a return to home and climb to the return to home altitude or whatever you've got set and come back and loiter over the home location. So even if you have a bit of a problem, it will still come back and uh, you've got a little bit of time maybe if something like the battery of your goggles falls out or you realise that the battery in your radio needs changing or something wacky like that. So hopefully that helps those of you that are following along with this. That's how you do a shake to wake auto launch. It's pretty straightforward. The trick is that you just have to make sure that almost everything else is disabled apart from the takeoff throttle minimum acceleration. Set it nice and low, something like five for a small wing like this. Uh, something like eight for a bigger wing is probably going to be fine. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.